Folks, we have some big draft news to talk about. NHL Central Scouting has officially put out its final 2024 NHL draft rankings. And every single year, it gives us the best idea of which players could go where and what NHL scouts are thinking. So where does the NHL have all these different players? Who could your team end up drafting? And where could these prospects go? Make sure you watch till the end as we go through the complete rankings to see my thoughts on it and what it could mean for the future of the draft. And make sure with that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey draft content just like this as we lead up to the wacky draft this year. And here we go. The NHL Central Scouting final rankings have been released. And even though the U18s haven't happened yet, and those will affect scouts' opinions, this is a really big sample on what scouts are thinking, what they're thinking towards the future, and how they see these players, which will be extremely important come draft time. And they also give us a little bit of a sneak preview. Of course, Macklin Celebrini is the number one North American skater, but the number one international skater is Anton Celaya. And here we go. We get a sneak preview into the top five of the North American skaters. We're going to get into all of the rankings here in a second. But if you guys don't know already, NHL Central Scouting ranks players differently than most. They sort them through North American and international. So there is a little bit of a disconnect between the two, but it gives us a good idea of where these scouts are, are wanting, what they're wanting when you compare different players. Uh, for instance, a Z Buham to Artem Levchinov. Of this top five, Zane Parekh is actually the biggest riser. In the Central Scouting midseason ranking, they had Parekh all the way at 10th among North American skaters, and now he finds himself inside the top five. The rest of the top five is actually the same compared to the rest of the midseason rankings. You had Celebrini in one, Levchinov second, Lindstrom three, and Zeeb Buham fourth. Really, the NHL Central Scouting was one of the first places I saw being really high on Zeeb Buham, and they continue to be, as they should. Now, even though I haven't made a ranking video on the top tier of the draft in a while, we talked about the top end of this draft defensively for a long time. And of course, in the central scouting ranking, you had Levshnov at number two among all players and Zeeb Buham at number four. And obviously the two top tier NCAA D. It's been a fascinating trajectory to see because I've actually warmed up a lot in Artem Levshnov. If you guys remember, I was kind of cooled on him quite a bit earlier on in the season. There were a lot of defensive mistakes to me, a lot of times where the maturity just was wasn't there you could tell he was playing in like the u16 u18 belarusian league a year and a half ago it was just very raw and i was really not liking the decision making compared to z buham who was bringing a lot more compete a lot more of, of just general smarts defensively and even though he wasn't a perfect defensive player was bringing that on top of the great rush attacking and the ability to just dominate a possession with levchinov though i think he's absolutely improved throughout the year this second half was much better for him than the first. And you saw some of those things tightening up, some of those defensive mistakes slowly but surely getting erased. And that to me was huge. We have seen rapid progression in Levshinov's game over the last year. And with what I've heard about how hard of a worker he is, I don't understand why people would have him as the best defenseman in the draft. And honestly, I'm not too far behind from having that opinion. As of right now, I still have Z Buham as my number one D, but Levshinov is honestly right behind him. And I can see both of these guys being excellent top 2D in the future. Now, the rest of the top 10 skaters list actually has some pretty big surprises, but first, let's talk about today's sponsor in Sleeper Fantasy. I actually have some big news for you guys. Sleeper Fantasy is now available in Canada for all provinces except for Ontario. So if you want to win big with your hockey knowledge, if you want to make daily NHL picks, picking more or less on different players, you can now do it in Canada too, which is huge. And today, we got three different picks. I got Alex Jabrinkin, more than 0.5 points. Same thing with JT Miller and Sebastian Ajo. Riding on the superstars today, and we'll see how it goes. But of course, if you guys go in the description, click on the link and use promo code grab on your first deposit, you'll get up to a $500 match. If you put in $20, you'll get 20 bucks free with Sleeper to play with, and it's a great opportunity to start out. Thank you so much to Sleeper Fantasy for sponsoring today's video, and hopefully you guys give it a try. I also forgot to mention, if you want to go through the NBA, the MLB, the NHL, whatever sport you want to do, Sleeper gives you the options to win big. But now let's get into the rest of the top 10 North American skaters because it is a doozy of a top 10. You got Trevor Connolly coming in at six, Sam Dickinson at seven, and then you got the double-age shell duo in Berkeley, Catton, and Teach Aginla right next to each other. And then Michael Hage out of the Chicago Steel at number 10. I like seeing him that high. He has been excellent over these past few weeks. Now, it's interesting because Connolly was fifth in the midseason ranking, so NHL Central Scouting has always been incredibly high on him, which I'm kind of weirded out by because I feel like Connolly is the exact type of player they wouldn't really like too much. He's a little bit one-dimensional, can be a little bit of a power play merchant, but I still love the skill set. I love the electrifying play that he can provide, but I do think there is a big boomer bust potential of Connolly, and I'm just kind of surprised to see him ahead of players like Gig uh, ahead of Gunla, ahead of Catton, ahead of other players like that. 
Of course, we touched on the Katten versus Aginla debate briefly in my Aginla video last week, talking about just how good Aginla has been in the playoffs and how he could creep up against Katten. Well, we're seeing Aginla and Katten neck and neck, and this could definitely be influenced by the U18s, what we see there. If Katten absolutely shows up, then he might cement himself there. But right now, it's looking pretty close between the two. And I love seeing Michael Hage in the top 10. Even though I might not be as high on him, I guess, as that position, I love seeing him get some love because he has gone through a lot over the last year of injuries last season with Chicago. But this year, he's been a brilliant player in 75, uh, 75 points in four, 54 regular season games. He's been an absolute beast pushing his own line in so many ways and just being such a driver of play. He's going to Michigan and I think he's absolutely going to crush it there, especially with some of the graduates we've seen recently. Hage is going to be a rock star and I love seeing him this hot. But as you can probably notice in the North American rankings, there was one glaring omission. Somebody that was eighth in the midseason rankings and has fallen even more. And it's someone we talked about having their draft stock fall this year and you could probably expect who it'll be. When we take a look at the full North American round one rankings, you can see after the top 10, you got Carter Yakimchuk and then Cole Iserman finding himself at number 12, not even just in the overall rankings, but 12th among North American skaters, not even counting the Europeans that some may assume are better than Iserman. What a fall from grace it has been for Eisenman and his stock and the and just the reputation around him. It seems like it's absolutely drove on off a cliff over these past few months. And I think some of that is unfair. I think Eisenman still has some value to bring, especially goal scoring wise. I mean, there is a situation where he could absolutely work. But it's interesting to see that stock just fall so low up to this point. Let me know down below, y'all. Would you take Eisenman 12th overall? Would you have him higher? Would you have him lower? Because it seems like Angel Central Scouting isn't on board. For the rest of the rankings, Beckett Seneca, I like seeing up at number 13. He has been awesome in the second half for Oshawa, and I've really liked the way he's rounded out his frame, the way he's been able to be a little bit less clunky throughout the year, and that's really aided him quite a bit. Love to see Liam Greentree as well get a lot of love. I think he would probably be a little bit higher for me personally, but he's a guy that just brings a lot of intensity, and the way he's able to drive play, even with his lack of great skating, to me, I think is going to be a really interesting trait going forward. But really, these North American rankings are, are pretty different here. I wanted to shout out Merrick Vanacker, who finds himself 17th in Central Scouting Rankings. Really a big jump than what he was before. And he's somebody that I've really warmed up on over the second half. He's a guy that I really didn't see too much talent in or individual skill set that could translate in the NHL a, a few months back. But this is a guy that just continues to work hard, continues to bring smarts in every position of the game. And he's just a guy that always knows where to be. And I think that soft in tight skill is actually a big, big use for him going forward. And he handles intensity pretty well. He could absolutely be a guy I could see turning into just a solid third liner that's just under the radar, but just makes the NHL and nobody really talks about it. As for other notes in the first round, there's some pretty interesting options here. I love Jet Luchenko at 20. If I love to see him getting some love there. I do also like the additions of Sam O'Reilly into the first round. Of course, you guys know I love this honey badger of a player. He just never gives up. And he's gonna be a really interesting one going forward. I also like Cole Baudouin, who I think could be a really good value. If he's around that late first round range, he's somebody that I've really liked with Barry this year, and I think has some really good under the radar talent, some great smarts that will translate pretty well. But now let's talk about those international skater rankings. And this one is absolutely wild, folks. For the top five, you got Anton Salayev, Ivan Demidov, Konsta Helenius, Adam Juracek, and Michael Brenzig Nugar. Now, this is a weird top five for me, especially when you consider their midseason rankings where they had Consta Hellenius third. And I'm not really sure if you're going to have Hellenius number one back then, what he's done to get worse. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Consta Hellenius, but if you're going to have number one, I think he's played better in the second half. Honestly, he's had some great moments, especially in the playoffs, but whatever. We'll see what happens. Still, though, I'm not the biggest fan of Anton Salayev over Ivan Demidov. I mean, this is something that you obviously going to have different opinions on, on how you view the game. But with Salayev, I see a very safe floor, somebody that's going to be a great Tyler Myers type. You know, a decent defensive player who brings some good physicality, but it's just not going to be able to provide that long-term unbelievable value that Ivan Demidov, I think, can. Even though there is a much lower floor in Demidov's case, the talent that he has, the, the play that he just puts out there. I mean, it's insane, the electrifying intensity that he puts out there on the ice. And having him at second in the rankings, I mean, this is a somebody that if he's outside the top five, is an easy bet. An easy bet to make, an easy bet to pick. And the contract situation also isn't as much a concern as it was for Michkov. And that could maybe help Demidov's case to go a little bit higher. 
I will say too, Adam Yurchek being at fourth overall, especially since he's been injured for most of the season, I'm kind of surprised by, but I don't mind it from what I saw, even though he's a little bit outmatched in the Czech League. There were some great moments with his skating and defensive play and the physicality he put out there. He just already read the game at a great level. And to me, even though the injury will hurt his development, I don't think it'll ruin it. This is still somebody that I could see as a first round caliber guy and somebody that you're able to really put in a good development system. You could really get a lot from and having him at fourth, even though I probably wouldn't have him this high, I like to see the love there. And then Michael Brenzig Newgard is just an absolute stud. I mean, not actually, but I think he'll be a great middle six player who just gets the job done, is going to have a good shot on him too, but just plays the game the right way, brings some great physicality, and is probably one of the most NHL-ready prospects in this draft behind Celebrini, in all honesty. The rest of the top 10 as well is a little bit of a surprise. Emil Hemming being this high, I was kind of surprised by a little bit. Also, just the lack of the Russian duo in Igor Chernyshov and Nikita Artemanov. You have Chernyshov at number nine, but Artemon of outside the top 10 is pretty interesting. He's someone that I've cooled on a little bit as the season has progressed, but I still love the intensity he puts out there. I love the way that he provides just, just good support along the wall. He's just a really balanced player. And I think that skill set is still something that can be unlocked. You can also see in the MHL doing pretty well in the MHL playoffs too. Outside the top 10, I don't know about that. Somebody I was kind of surprised to not see in the top 10 was Stein Solberg, a Norwegian defenseman who I've really liked throughout the year, was great at the World Juniors, but especially since he's gotten back in Norway, has been brilliant there, amazing in the playoffs too. Is already a super refined defensive physical player who's bringing a lot more offense as the season goes and is pushing a lot more offensively. He's a guy that I could see going in the first round and being a really under the radar talent. And then, of course, we go into the first round of the international skaters, and there are some massive surprises here. I mean, Leon Mugli being so much farther ahead than a Badinka, a Frey, and, of course, a Stein Solberg to me is really questionable. I mean, Leon Mugli has put up some pretty good point numbers this year, but I just don't really see as much translatable ability long term. But you look at that, and I think there are some players here that could be higher by the time the U18s are over, perhaps. But just looking at the players I like that I would have higher, Dominic Badinka, I have absolutely loved throughout this year. Just so good defensively reminds me a lot of what Aileen Bixell was in his draft year that to me is kind of the style you're looking at and he's been doing that in the SHL which is incredibly important in his draft year but you also just got the rest of the top 30 and uh, Nikita Artemanov at that 19th spot I mean I don't really see him being that low but interesting there and then you got Stylin Silver who we just talked about at number 20 some interesting names here also you got Adis Koivu of course son of Saku Koivu gonna be really interesting to see where he ends up falling on draft day he's been really good throughout the year and maybe could drive up himself to maybe even a second round pick perhaps I do want to shout out 2D that I think should absolutely not be outside the first round in Thomas Galvis and Daniel Ustinkov. Galvis has been really under the radar in, che in the Czech League this year. And even though he is a shorter frame, which I get the reservations about, he is a really strong skater, brings some great offensive uh, intensity. He's a guy that I really love the pace that he puts out there. And then you got Daniel Ustinkov, who to me is just a really well-rounded defenseman, somebody that I'm not as high on as a Badinka or a Frey or, whatever, or any of those top end D, but still is somebody that I can absolutely see turning into a bottom pair D someday. To see him at 34, that's just disrespectful, man. I also just noticed Tobias Heenanen at 55, which to me is just awful. That's just awful. I guess I get it if you just look at frame, 5'10", 170 pounds, but I've really loved watching him in the Liga this year. He's somebody that doesn't get the most minutes in the world, but does what he does best. I mean, he's just an efficient forward. He drives play in the right way, makes good decisions. He's not somebody that's super fancy, but he plays the game a simple way, and is just able to drive play in a good way, too. He's somebody that I just like a lot for the game he plays, the way he reads the game, and... I don't know, for how well he's done in the Liga, to have him at 55 among European players, I mean, it's an improvement over the midseason rankings, but... Still not where I'd have. But those were NHL Central Scouting's final 2024 rankings. It's kind of strange to me that they don't do one after the U18s, but whatever. It gives us a great idea of how scouts are viewing these guys right now and gives us a good idea of where these guys could go on draft day. A lot of interesting names in this draft. It is looking like a fascinating draft. And with the U18s coming up, there could be a lot of big changes too. So of course, stick with the channel as we make all the update videos surrounding that and in the future right before draft time. And of course, all the content around the draft too. So make sure you stick with us there. If you guys did enjoy today's look, quick look, through of the rankings make sure with that like button hit that subscribe and hit that notification bell if you enjoyed and comment down below what did you guys think of the nhl central scouting rankings what did you agree what did you disagree with i'd love to know all your thoughts down below of course make sure you should have all the hockey fans you know online and click on this card for all my 2024 draft content right in one playlist my name is nathan and i hope you have a fantastic hockey day and i'll see you in the next one goodbye mm -hmm.